So I'm going to share my screen here. Is everybody able to see that? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I just have this just uh, as um, we're, we're going to have a live demo. So we really won't have any uh, slides, but I do have a couple of things I would like to share with you. But anyway, um, I kind of want to give you, um, as I was saying, we were all kind of caught, at least for me, I was caught off guard by Windows 11. And as a matter of fact, I thought it was a hoax when I first, uh, when I first heard about it. And so um, with that, I got to thinking, I, I, I said, well, let's just take a, a walk back uh, in memory lane and see exactly how we've come to uh, this point. And I remember when I first uh, was introduced uh, to computers, it was about 1980, uh, 1989. And um, I was, um, well, actually it was earlier than that. I was working um, at the FAA at the time, the Federal Aviation Administration. And I recall us getting the very first computer uh, in the office and it was uh, IBM. And I remember seeing the, uh, the screen and was a blinking cursor. And as you can recall, everything back in those days was all um, command line and DOS was the uh, um, operating system that was used um, on these machines. And the um, first couple programs that I recall was um, Harvard Graphics, uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3, and WordPerfect. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember uh, seeing those programs, and I didn't know how it, you, you could access them or anything like that. So it came rather a bit of a, a, a chore, and I really rapidly lost interest. I didn't want to, uh, it didn't seem like to me that it was worth the effort that it took to get all this stuff uh, running. But um, if you recall, the thing that, um, that really made it, uh, um, that made Windows or at least computers a lot more um, um, easier to use was actually when they, and really it did introduce Windows. But I remember prior to that, I had something that I used what's called the hard disk menu, and it was still command line based. And I was surprised to find this graphic. That's about all of it that's left. And uh, you would write the command lines into uh, this little program, and then you had a series of numbers. It sort of worked like function keys on your computer today, where you had um, one, two, three, maybe one was the word perfect, two was... Um, uh, Harvard graphics, but also on that menu was a program called Windows because in those days, Windows ran as a program uh, uh, in DOS, which was the uh, this operating system that was actually the operating system. So over time, as you recall, the very, uh, I, if I remember the very first really a usable Windows product or Windows uh, program was Windows uh, 3.1. And um, at that time, you begin to see programs then being uh, written to work uh, with uh, under Windows, but still Windows was settled as a DOS program. And uh, the next variant of that was Windows 3.11 which actually um, gave me access to the internet, which is a thing that really was uh, my killer uh, app. One that really got me interested in computers was to be able to access the internet and be able to uh, explore uh, different things in the world of music and uh, art and all those kinds of things, which um, Windows allowed, uh, photos and graphics and all these things to, to really become part of uh, the computing. But, uh, you know, it's still Windows was not, or computers in those days, wasn't really uh, a household item. The, probably the closest thing that you had to a computer in your household in those days was probably a, an egg timer. And we don't think about egg timers being computers, but if you think about that, 
they actually, you know, were a computer in, in a sense. And then Microsoft's big jump, trying to get uh, itself uh, released from DOS was Windows 95. And uh, that was probably the first Windows uh, um, program that actually could be called an operating system. So um, it had all the um, aspects of an operating system. It could do various things. And it actually uh, supplanted DOS as um, a means of running programs because programs were really running in Windows. And then, of course, down the line, we had nine, Windows 98. And then, uh, of course, uh, Windows 2000 and uh, Windows Me. That was interesting. 2000 was the professional version of, of Windows, and the Me was the home version. And later, of course, those all changed to, um, now as we know, Windows Home and Windows Pro. Then coming along Windows XP, which was uh, probably the longest lived version of, of Windows uh, uh, thus far, and Windows 7. And then there was another big break where Microsoft again was trying to, uh, to uh, reinvent itself and try to uh, make Windows a little bit more usable, or at least not a little bit, but more usable for other devices such as tablets and um, phones. And so that was kind of the birth of Windows 8 with its tiles, uh, rather say controversial tiles. And then, of course, they brought out a variant of it that we called the Windows 8.1. Most recently, Windows 10. And Windows 10 was sort of uh, Microsoft's efforts to do a reboot and give um, a fresh face um, based on prior uh, successes with a uh, previous version of Windows where they got rid of the the uh, tiles and kind of went board back to um, the roots of how Windows began with its start menu and so forth. But it also was a fresh start. And we were given the idea that, you know, Windows 10 would be the last operating system that you would um, uh, need or ever use. At least that's what we thought until um, the fall of last year when Windows 11 popped up. And so everybody's question was, why Windows 11? Well, first of all, uh, there's a lot of things that have occurred uh, in the hardware department and, of course, security and a lot of issues that really need to be addressed. And uh, in doing so, uh, Windows 11 brings about New terms that we that have been around a long, but uh, been around a while, but they're just been coming into forefront, and that's the secure boot and the trusted platform module, and those are probably the biggest changes. Just, and I think that's the reason why we went from um, Windows 10 to Windows 11 because of those uh, changes were rather significant, but. Um, those two items really have um, brought about some significant changes of how uh, the operating system uh, works with the hardware. And so uh, Microsoft has said that you have to have at least those two at the very minimum in order to run 11. But also the other thing about this is that um, Windows 11 no longer um, uh, supports 32-bit architecture. It's a true 64-bit. In the past, we've had 64 versions, I mean, 32-bit versions and 64-bit versions of Windows. And with the case of Windows 11, that is not the case. Um, and there's a kind of reason why um, the use of the 32-bit uh, architectures, because it allows you to, uh, it better utilizes your memory and a lot of other things. Um, it handles uh, RAM a lot better. Um, 
And if you're running Windows on a computer that's less than 10 years old, um, you almost are guaranteed to be able to run 64-bit uh, um, software. And uh, But that's not to be um, um, confused that you can't not run 32-bit software, but because you can, it runs just fine. But those are some of the big significant things about um, Windows 11 that uh, I think are important and uh, the reason why we're where we are now. Um, I'm going to also put an article in the chat um, on um, that you can read about how Windows 11 utilizes uh, uh, the 64-bit architecture. And as we um, do our demo, we'll also see um, a couple other things um, that are of interest is the design language, which uh, they're going to be using. So with that, I'm going to um, just go right into the demo. A lot of things over here. All right. So uh, this is my desktop, and uh, I'm going to uh, scroll down and show you the taskbar. Now I use a hidden taskbar, but I'm going to uh, change that so that it'll always be uh, present. So we won't get. Um, it won't uh, be bouncing up. And to do that, I'm just going to right click on the taskbar. And as you see now, when you do that, you get what's called taskbar settings. And that takes you directly to the taskbar area in the um, settings menu under personalization. So you have to scroll down and you'll see something that says, taskbar behaviors. And when and you notice that it's a long strip with a little down arrow, but you can click on it and uh, it will then expand and it will give you a couple options here. Now, of course, the <clears throat> striking feature of Windows 11 now today is that the taskbar uh, icons are in the center of the, the uh, bar itself. And as you can see here, there is something that says taskbar alignment. And that's what uh, you can use to change um, that view if you desire by clicking on the down arrow. And you can now see that you can place it to the left of the menu as um, you're more accustomed to. But that is the only place you can move the uh, taskbar because you no longer have the option, at least at this point, to put it left or right of your screen or top or of the screen. The only place that it will be will be at the bottom and it'll either be to the left or center, and that's your choice. You still, of course, has the have the capability to automatically hide the taskbar, and like I said, in this case, I'm going to uh, uncheck that box, and it'll stay here for us to see. And also, I'm going to put it back to the center. One of the other things about um, as we go through our taskbar here, is that this area is now referred to as the um, taskbar corner. So if you see that, um, which is the words that's used here, taskbar corner, they're talking about this area now. It's no longer referred to as the notification area or um, the other term that was used in previous versions. So if you hear someone saying, well, it's in the taskbar corner, 
they're referring to this area here. And here you'll see the normal uh, uh, icons that are typical uh, in other versions of Windows. In my case, I have uh, Dropbox, this is OneDrive. Uh, this is um, the microphone that's showing I'm being, uh, that I'm using it in Zoom. This is my Wi-Fi uh, access. If you have um, an ethernet um, cable, it will show just a um, computer um, looking icon. And of course, sound. And here is, uh, I'm using a laptop, so this is showing my battery. And of course, the, uh, the time and date. Now, when I click on this, I will get the calendar. And then above that, I'll get a notification area, um, which will show you all the things that you have uh, uh, um, got as far as emails and whatever. And you can um, uh, make those available to you when you go to the personalization settings, and I'll show you that. And then to the further right, you still have the capability of hiding your desktop uh, with that little sliver that's here. So those parts of the taskbar uh, have not changed very much. As we go to the left of the taskbar, we'll see a new Windows um, start button. Uh, it's now a square rather than the slanted uh, uh, version that we saw in Windows 10. Uh, next to it is a spyglass, which actually uh, will give you the, um, the search menu. It replaces the search bar that was on the previous taskbar. And this is the only icon you will see. You won't have the longer uh, bar that you type in as you did before. So when you click this, it comes up and you're in that search area and your cursor will be in the search area that you can type in whatever request uh, that you want. And of course, it still will search all the uh, applications. Uh, then you can um, just search particular in, a, uh, in an app if you want to just go to um, one of these, you can do that. Uh, your documents, the web, and then here is a more. And of course, if you do a, a drop down, you have email, folders, music, people, photos, settings, and videos. Now, when it's in the all uh, position, that means that everything is going to be um, searched uh, with whatever criteria you put in here. So if I put like uh, an automobile, you see that I'm going to get uh, a all the search matches. The best match is going to say that it's in. It's looking possibly for an automobile magazine, but then below it's also search the web, which is giving me these categories. There's also a, a photo of an automobile that's here, and then these are documents that I have on my hard drive where I have uh, that has the word automobile within the document. And then to the left of that, of course, it's going to give you a snippet of, uh, of what it's giving you as your best match. So you're seeing um, different uh, aspects of automobile.
to uh, the screen will stay present until you click out of it and to get rid of it, you just need to click away from it and it uh, will then um, uh, disappear. Um, the next uh, version, I mean, the next uh, icon is what is referred to as widgets. And this is also where you can, um, uh, I'm sorry, this is where you will um, uh, have your um, virtual desktops. And I, I, I mislabel uh, that. And so here, as you can see, I have desktop one, but I also can create my another desktop by hitting the plus sign. And then that creates a new desktop, which I can, which I'm now in. And if I uh, decide to um, launch um, Edge here in this particular desktop, I can. And then uh, if I want to toggle back to the other desktop, I can do it this way. This is a very similar to the little, what looked like the little film strip in Windows 10. Um, it's now, uh, I, I believe they call that the task view, if you recall. It's now uh, just a singular um, item of its own. And you can go in and create as many virtual desktops as you like and use those um, in any way that you uh, want to. The next icon is what is wedges. And when you um, click that, you have uh, the traditional weather, um, stocks, photos, and all this, these things can be customized to your liking. So it's, uh, uh, and I'm signed in with my Microsoft account. So uh, when I click on settings, it gives me uh, the widget settings. So I, I've selected family safety, outlook calendar, to-do list, tips, traffic, entertainment, sports and weather. So uh, the one that's grayed out is the one uh, that is not there. So if I click that, uh, I can remove that, remove or, or add to that. Uh, then our traditional ones is our um, other icons that we have pinned uh, to the um, here. Edge is going to be probably one of the ones that will be in your um, tray as a result of uh, your upgrade because uh, remember Edge is part of the operating system and we'll talk more about that uh, shortly. But I also have Chrome as a browser I like to use. I have a icon here for Microsoft Office which I like this um, setting that icon there because it gives me um, um, control of all the applications I have within Office. And you can, um, when you install Office, uh, you notice that icon will be the one that is used to identify Office. And I just uh, right clicked and, and pinned it to the start menu. And you can still do that. When you right click, as you can see, here, it gives me my jump list. And these are um, new tasks that I can uh, create just from uh, clicking. If I want to create a new Word document, I can do it from here, or a new PowerPoint, or a new Excel. Or I can unpin it from the taskbar. And as I said earlier, um, when, uh, and I'll show you that. Um, how to pin these to the taskbar and to the start menu. It hasn't changed at all. Of course, this is a microphone, a Microsoft Store, the snipping tool, our file explorer, our, your phone, eat my mail. This is a tiny URL. And then of course, these are things that we have running. We have settings, which I opened up shortly and they're identified by little dots at the bottom as they were in uh, Windows 10. I have a PowerPoint slide running. As you can see, uh, it's indicated by a little uh, a dot at the below. And then of course, this is Zoom. Now, when I click on my Start button, 
I get a new start menu. And the new start menu uh, is um, been changed because rather than have the tiles, they are now just icons of the programs that you have pinned to your start menu. And it can run several pages and it's indicated here by these dots on the side. So if you scroll down, you can scroll um, any number of pages. It's very similar to what you see on uh, your uh, on cell phones. It's indicated by the dots. There's also a little error there too that you notice that you can click on as well. Um, well, this is uh, actually um, segmented in four sections. We have our search here where we can um, uh, search anything on our computer. We have our pinned icons. And to the left of that, we have something that's called all apps. This will give us view of all the um, apps that we have installed on our computer. So when I click that, I'm going to get the laundry list that we used to see in a separate pane on the old start menu. So now you have all the programs that are on your computer, and you can still um, uh, get to those easy by just clicking on either a character or a letter, and you'll get a grid. So say, for instance, I want to find Microsoft Word, just for instance. I can just go down, uh, click on the W, and Microsoft Word will be in the um, in the um, section of the alphabet for the, for the for under W. Uh, to get back to where I was, I just click on the back button here, and then I'm back to uh, the main view of the start menu. Now below that, you notice it says recommended. And what this really is, is uh, recent, the uh, documents that I've recently opened, but they have recommended because you can um, uh, do several things like open a web browser or remove them from the list. But um, you'll see this is dynamic, it will change. Um, I think probably recent would probably been a better name for it, but they use recommended. Uh, and then to the left, right of that, you're going to see more. And what this will, will give you the overflow. And of course, they're categorized by uh, the time in which they were used. So 29 minutes ago, one hour, this was yesterday. And there's a a list of all the things that you have recently used or opened within a, a, a certain given time period. And of course, to get back to the um, previous screen, I just click on back and we're back to where we were. Below that, you'll find the, your account information and depending on how you have this set up, uh, it, you might have a picture in there, or you might just have a letter, and then it'll have your name. But when you click on this, it gives you um, your uh, how you can change your account settings. And when you do that, you'll notice that you're given the um, an opportunity to take a photo if you want to put a photo of yourself or you can go out and choose a photo that you have on your hard drive to put in this space here. It'll also tell you uh, your Microsoft account information, which in this case is your email, and it shows that I'm an administrator because I am running, uh, I'm not running a local account, I'm running my under the Microsoft account. And below that, as you notice here, it is uh, indicating that I'm running my Microsoft account. But then if I wanna sign in with a local account instead, I can still uh, do that by clicking here. And then I will just sign in as a local account without using my Microsoft account. Then below that, these are all the accounts that you have uh, created 
uh, not only um, in Microsoft, but uh, other ones as well. It'll show all your subscriptions, uh, what devices that you um, that you have. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to change your privacy settings or manage your privacy settings, your security, uh, the payment options that you have a, that you've allowed. Uh, to be used on your computer if you have, uh, for instance, you're using Office 365, then this is the information you'd put in to uh, see that that is um, taken care of on whatever uh, plan that you have. And then, of course, this is your order history. And then, of course, the there's other things like um, things you can purchase. Um, this is the family members that you have allowed to share your Office 365. Um, this is where your rewards, uh, you get X number of rewards uh, when you do searches with Bing and you find all that information here um, and Outlook and some other things. So. Um, So that is how uh, that uh, that works. So like I said, if you're in any box, all you need to do is just click away from it in a blank area and that, that particular one will, that particular um, box or will uh, go away. So back here to our um, to our start menu. Uh, like I said, if you want to pin other um, icons here, it's it's done basically the same way. When you go to all apps, and then you can just uh, right click on that. In this case, since mail is already on my start menu, I can unpin it but I can also go here to more and um, pin it, unpin it from the taskbar as well, or, ta or pin it to the taskbar. Let's use uh, like a 3D viewer. That's not one we use. So I could pin that to my start. I can go here to more to, um, uh, to do some app settings or rate and review or share. And I also can also uninstall it as well just by right clicking on that particular um, uh, um, program. Like if I wanted to pin uh, access to my start menu, I could. If I wanted to pin it to my taskbar, run it as administrator open location. So those features uh, our functions rather have not changed. To the, um, in the lower part, as we were talking about the accounts to the right of that, we still have the um, power button. This is network, this is pictures, and this is downloads. Now I um, created those latter three myself. The power button will be here, but as far as network, uh, pictures and downloads were ones that I did when I um, did personalization. So um, I go here to personalization and I go down here to where it says start. I can um, then um, add those to that particular um, Our item uh, on my start menu. Let me make sure I'm right. Hold on a second. It's not right.
So um, you notice that uh, uh, this is turned on, uh, but here's the where you add those, where it says folders. And here is where I chose to add my downloads, my pictures, and the network icons. That th those are the ones that appear in this area here. And I'll and by turning these on or off, that's how I get these items. If I want to add the settings, I could just turn that on. And when I go here to um, my start, you'll then see the settings icon, which is here. And I guess that's just a quick way of getting to, uh, it, it's very much like what was in Windows 10, if you remember, if it, the, um, when your start menu came up, you had your um, uh, Windows icon here, and then above that, you had several other icons. Well, they've emulated that here, except that it's uh, rather than being uh, vertical, it's near horizontal. Uh, as you notice, uh, when I'm working with uh, the uh, settings menu, it's it's giving me a set of of um, of what they were referring to as breadcrumbs. So right now I'm in the folders um, um, section. If I want to go back one page, I can just click on start, and that takes me back to the um, start portion of personalization. And then I can just hit personalization. And then I come back to the personalization section. The difference now is that in the old settings, if you remember, and I have a screenshot here, I'll show you. This is our old um, way of doing things in um, Windows 10. As you notice that settings were a, a series of um, tiles or you might call them um, labels maybe. This one, when you clicked on system, it would then expand and give you all the um, uh, things you could do under system that would display sound, notification and power, just for an example. In a new version, is that when you do this, is that these are all now to the left and then to the right, you have another uh, breakout of display, sounds, notifications, focus, all of those uh, categories. But then you can go in and further uh, define those by clicking on it and you get a, a more changes that you can make. So uh, it's giving you a lot more um, options to do in the various categories than you had in the previous version. Um, as we are beginning to understand settings, it's rapidly going to display the old control panel. Um, so um, I've always told individuals, I said, the more that you can come familiar with um, settings, the better off you will be because eventually the control panel is going to disappear. But don't have worry because the control panel is still available. You can just click on the search bar and type in control panel. And uh, there's the old control panel. So it's still here, except it has a little spiffed up um, icons that look a little bit differently, but it's still the same. You can still go to um, the large icons, which gives you um, a, that kind of breakdown. So the control panel is still around, but I've always told uh, people in my club, I said, if you can figure it out, uh, Try to figure it out using settings. If you can't figure it out there, then go to the control panel.
So say, for instance, if I wanted to uh, do something with my printers, I could go here uh, back to uh, system, and then I would go to Bluetooth and devices, and then I would have my printers and scanners, and they all, they show here. And then of course I can go in and uh, uh, further do things with that particular printer. If I wanted to add a uh, new printer or a new scanner, I can also do that here by just clicking on add device. But if you notice when I uh, went to Bluetooth and devices, I had this large tile up here well, I can just click here to add a device, and then it'll give me these choices of how I want, what I want to add. And I think that was a feature in Windows 10. It wasn't so um, upfront as it is now. So I'm going to, um, just close the settings out and move on to um, another area. One of the things we talked about was, was browsers. Now you can still um, use uh, whatever browser that uh, you were uh, using before. Uh, the um, problem that comes on is um, say for instance, if I want, Edge is gonna be your default browser in Windows. Now I couldn't find out if you had Edge, um, I'm sorry, if you had Chrome as your default browser, whether it stayed the default browser when you upgrade it, I wasn't able to find out. But say for instance, I do want to make um, my Chrome browser my default browser. So what the uh, procedure is, is that you go ahead and open it up as you would in the past, go over to settings here, and then you click on default browser. Now this is where it, kinda, it, it gets a little uh, antsy because now when you click on that, Microsoft is gonna come up with something that looks like this. Your in settings, it's going to say um, make Google Chrome the default browser. And uh, when you do this in Chrome, this is what happens. It brings up settings. And now you have to go in and set uh, the default. The easiest way to do that is just type in HTML because that's the uh, file type, and then press, uh, and then um, I'm sorry, I put that. You need to put HTML here, I believe. And then when you go here, uh, it's going to bring up. Uh, I got confused. Hold on a second. I had this working. I practice this and let's see. Oh. All right. The key to make sure when you do this, you have to make sure you put the dot in front of the extension because that's what I didn't do. When I didn't put the dot in, I just put HTML, it wouldn't do anything. So I have to go and put the dot in front of it. And now it shows Microsoft Edge is now the default. So the next thing you do is click here and then you choose. 
and you see you have Microsoft Edge. Here you have Micro Google Chrome. You click that, and then that becomes the default. I'm sorry. I, I'll do that again. So make sure everyone sees what I see, understands, understand, understood what I did. So um, this is kind of a two part process. So uh, I'm, I'm in Chrome. Chrome is, is the, um, is my browser and I want to make Chrome my uh, default. So what I do here is go to the three dots and it might change for Firefox, um, but you need to go to settings on either one of those and then go and click on default browser like I did there and then click on make default and it's going to bring up settings and here you type in dot html because that's the file extension and then microsoft edge is going to show up as being the default you want to go here and click on the little uh, icon and then choose the other option and then do okay and then at that point, Chrome will then be your default browser. The other change that has heard, uh, that has occurred in Windows is how File Explorer looks. Uh, File Explorer is the little um, icon here at the bottom when you click on it you're uh, then greeted with um, File Explorer, which shows you all the um, files and folders that you manage on your computer. And depending on what view you have, it'll either show in this PC or quick access. And that is uh, no different than what it's been in before. To change that, you go here to view and then go to, um, I'm sorry, go to the three dots and then go to uh, options and it brings up uh, the folder option. And then you just change this to whichever view you want File Explorer to show. So in this case, it's showing in this PC, I want to show in quick access. So I'll choose that and then choose okay. Now, when I open File Explorer, it will go to quick access. So it just depends on how you how you prefer. If you want it to open in quick access or in this PC, I have lots of uh, files and uh, on my uh, computer, so I prefer in quick access. And then I drag I drag the ones that I prefer that I use all the time up here to this area. So it, they're quickly accessible rather than having to scroll all the way down to the bottom or through all of this to get to them. So I can move any of these up in this area that I want. The thing that we have to always remember that this is just shortcuts. This is not, um, it's not a duplication of what you find in the lower part of, your, uh, of the panel. As you delete anything here, you also are going to delete it off your computer. So just keep that in mind. But that part has not changed. That's still the same. But this is a part that's new. You notice the ribbon is missing. Um, and uh, the reasoning behind this is that Microsoft wants to simplify uh, how you are able to um, to use File Explorer. And um, so it has uh, brought these down to the, to the most used um, functions. So say for instance, if I select uh, this particular file, then you notice that now these have lit up. I have cut, I have copy, I have the paste, I have rename, I have share, 
delete. Now in the old of, of file manager, and I have a, a screenshot of that. I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Um, you'll notice that um, you had a group of icons that were grouped by um, different categories. And then you had those functions within them. Well, they've now simplified those to the most commonly used. Now, you can still go to others by um, clicking on the ellipses which says allows you to see more and then you can see where there's path and um, select all etc so those are are still available to you except that it, it's just now in a more simplified form now the other thing that's different too is that when you right click on any of the files and folders you get a different contacts menu as well let's see Okay, so here, as you notice that uh, along the top, you, you have, oh dear. You have the cut, the uh, copy, the rename and uh, share are all here at the top uh, where you can easily get to those where they used to be in this list. They're now along the top, so you can do those rather quickly. But if you want to uh, uh, see more of the options, you can click here and say show more options, and then you get the full um, um, gamut of things that you can do with a particular file. Now, one of the things that uh, I discovered, and it was pointed out me to a, another member, is that Windows 11 no longer will show copy to folder or move to folder, which was one of the options in the ribbon. I was able to find a, a really easy registry hack that will give you um, uh, access to those functions. And it's just a matter of, uh, of, uh, of uh, clicking on a, uh, little program you run and it'll add these this functionality and i will put that in the chat along with uh, that other document i said i was going to do uh, before we um, close um but other than that everything else is pretty straightforward as far as using um, um the file manager. I mean, you can still do the same things that you did before. I mean, these panels are still the same. You, um, you can here, go here to different views to make them uh, uh, extra large, etc. The only thing that's different is that the ribbon is no longer uh, a feature of, uh, of uh, this particular application. You'll see, uh, as you notice, uh, there's if you change the view of this to large, you notice that the icons have changed in appearance quite a bit. They're um, they're flat. They're more colorful than they were in the past. And again, if you change the view of these for that particular folder, they still will stay the same. So um, if you like the list, then it'll be in the list view. And when you open it up next time, it'll still be in that particular view. Um, 
one other thing I'd like to point out is that when you bring up an application, is that uh, there's been a little bit of a change on how uh, this menu now works. When you bring your uh, um, hover over the uh, maximize uh, icon, you notice that you have um, some other uh, pop-ups that show up. And these are actually what they were calling um, uh, uh, your, snip to, your snapped to uh, uh, feature. So say for instance, if I want this document to be on the right side, I can just click that and now it, it shows on the right side. And then I can choose whatever document I want to put uh, on the, I'm sorry, on the left side and whatever document I want to put a right side, I just can choose it. But all I do is just can go here. And uh, if I want um, the uh, document on the left side to be larger, I can choose this icon and then I can use, choose that. So uh, this is a little bit easier than trying to do the swipe that we used to do in the past back and forth. Um, Let's see what else. So the next question is um, getting uh, Windows 11. And of course you can do it um, several ways. You can either, um, if your machine is eligible, this is what you'll see. This will be the first thing that you will see um, when you um, go to Windows Update. Uh, Windows 11 will come down as a standard Windows Update. And you'll get something that says, great news, your PC can run Windows 11. Uh, then when it's actually available to you, you will see this screen. It'll say that, Upgrade to Windows 11 is ready and it's free. And then you'll see this big button that's blue that says download install. If you do not want to install Windows 11, then you need to click on stay on Windows 10 for now. And when you do that, it will then place um, the uh, invitation to your right in this area here. And it will actually, um, uh, you will no longer see this screen or this banner. Now, if you mistakenly download and install Windows 11, you have 10 days to revert back to Windows 10. So if you uh, want to play with it for a couple days and see if you really like it, then uh, you can do so. And then if you decide, well, I don't think this is what I really want to use right now, you can go back and uh, uninstall it uh, as long as it's within the 10 day period. And you will find it in what your Windows update, it'll, it'll show, let me see if I can get to it here. It won't show on this machine because we're not, um, I mean, we're way, we're way past the expiration date. But in settings, um, Windows update, Uh, it, one of the uh, choices in update history will be revert back to um, um, your uh, older version of Windows 10, but it has to be within that 10 day period. Uh, and then, of course, the other way is that you, if you're kind of antsy and you want to do it, you haven't, you're at this point where it's saying um, this can run um, uh, Windows 11. You can also just use the Windows 11 Update Assistant, and then that will force uh, the install of Windows 11 uh, on your computer. And then, of course, the third option is buy a new machine. 
I heard some conversation earlier that said that um, uh, in some instances, people have been able to run it on um, other machines, and uh, that is true. The only thing that you uh, uh, are have to contend with is the fact that you're not going to be possibly subject to get um, any kind of updates, uh, which could be problematic at some point. But I'm looking to see probably that uh, as time go on, particularly if uh, goes on, particularly when there is a processor issue, there's several issues that prevent you from running 11 other than the TPM. The other is um, the processor itself. Some processors won't, uh, are not eligible and they have a list of those. But I think over time, those are, that's going to change that some of the processors will um, be deemed uh, uh, appropriate to run Windows 11. So, um, just have to uh, just keep checking. But as it was pointed out earlier that uh, Windows 10 will still be supported till 2025. So uh, if you're not uh, interested in running Windows 11, you're perfectly good uh, to run Windows 10 to that point. And then maybe by that time you've decided that you need to buy a new uh, computer. Uh, so then when you get the new computer, Windows 11 will be on it. Um, it might possibly be that by that time there'll be Windows 12, who knows. But um, anyway, um, I guess at this point, uh, I'm uh, finished my, uh, my demo. If there is any questions, uh, I'll be glad to take those now. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen. We can always go back. Uh, if there's something that someone wants to get in more depth, well, I just would like to know how long you had to work to get your, after you installed 11, how Actually, long did it take you to get it to run the way you enjoyed using it? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, it comes down as a regular Windows update. And the only thing that I really have uh, struggled with is uh, getting accustomed to where things have moved to. Uh, when you download it, it's going to be probably uh, very similar. I mean, it's not going to change anything that you, any programs or any of those uh, settings that you have in Windows 10. The biggest issue is going to be uh, where things have moved to. Um, but other than that, it didn't take me very long. I, in fact, I use Windows 11 now almost exclusively. I still have a PC that has Windows 10 on it. But uh, thank you. Judy has a question. Yep, I have a comment. I'm one who customizes everything I have since the beginning of time, and it takes quite a while. Uh, it would be more difficult for me to teach Windows 11 to a beginner than it would be to teach Windows 10, but it takes you a while to figure out the terminology where everything is from what you're used to. And um, I'm still not finished. I don't use it. I have it for demo purposes. I'm giving a presentation on it to my group Monday night. Bill already gave one to my group in November, uh, similar to what you just had. But I'm going to view it from I'm customizing it. And this is what I had to do. But it's like learning a new language. If you don't know how to speak Spanish and you need to learn to speak Spanish, it's the same process. Yeah, just like Judy was saying, everything you do is a learning curve. Uh, like I said, Judy got, my Judy got one for her for Christmas and I loaded it, uh, installed it on her computer. It was a brand new computer, but you had to install the updates. And I played around with it for a day. And here again, it's a learning thing. You have to find out where different things are at. And most everything is the same, but it's maybe in a different location as Bill was showing us. And like, like I said, it'll, it's not going to take you a couple of days to learn everything. Just like anything, over a period of time, we've all learned different things about our computers. Uh, this is the third time I've seen Bill's uh, presentation. And each time I see it, I see I learned something different about Windows 11. Although 
I don't have it on any of my computers at this point in time. I only have one computer in my house that is capable of updating at this point in time. So, yeah, and, and still till, you know, we have until October of 2025 that Windows 10 will no longer be supported. Not saying that it's not going to be able to be used. I still have a computer with Millennium on it, and I still have a computer with Windows 95 on it. So they all still work. It all depends on what you're going to use them for and what uh, what you want, what features you want in your computer. And as I would tell people that are moving to a new operating system, that you already know the terminology. That little magnifying glass for search is great. Uh, you just type in what you're looking for, and boom, you'll go there. And then with that, over time, you will figure out where it is located. But the search function is fantastic when having a new OS. A lot of people are scared of computers or tablets or phones and stuff like that. There are very few things that you can do to destroy it. Uh, the mm -hmm. thing about it, you can sit there and, and tap on things and learn and then it gives you the options here. If you don't want to do this, click get out of it and go back to where you're at and don't do it. Uh, especially like programs and things like that. You know, hopefully you know what uninstall means. Uh, the big thing about computers and tablets, mainly computers over tablets, is, is searching the internet and watch out where you're at. You know, you got to be careful. I tell, oops, yeah. I tell people to stop and smell the roses. That's it. When something pops up, don't go, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. You know, just sit and read it and then say to yourself, do I want to do that or not? Nope. Click no. Yeah, Click the what... X to get out of there and boom. And then if you've, you know, like in Word or something, you've do something, uh, Control Z is your very good friend because it means go back some steps. And if you go back too far, Control Y will take you forward one where you want to be. But do stop and smell the roses, take a deep breath, and make your 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 own personal decision. Yes, sir. I, um, I put two um, uh, items in the uh, chat that I told you I would um, provide. One is that PC article about 32-bit um, versus 64-bit, which is a really, rather interesting article. I also put um, the information on how to um, the registry hack that uh, Reestablishes um, the uh, move uh, folder to and the copy molder folder to. Uh, that's what that's about. Um, you'll see that. And uh, she used the very top part of that. I'm just going to show you. Um, I will uh, share my screen here. Okay, so the add or remove copy to folder and move to folder in Windows 11 for some reason is not there. Um, but um, you can do this little registry um, editor and all you need to do really is just download this very first step where it says click here to download and that will then bring up uh, this box and you'll say, it says, do you want to allow the changes to make uh, to your device? Say yes. And then you'll get this information that's kind of scary, but uh, just say yes anyway, because it's not. And then with that, you will then now have copy to folder and move to folder in that context menu that I showed you. Uh, the other methods don't bother with because you have to actually go into the registry to do uh, some things, and that's really not necessary. This little um, uh, fix will uh, install very easily. And over time, it seems people are crabbing and complaining about things like that that are missing. And Microsoft is slowly but surely adding some of those things back that we really like. I don't like snip and sketch. Bill referred to it as a snipping tool. I like the real snipping tool that came with Windows 10. I don't need the rest of that stuff. I like one stop shopping things. And uh, I've got some code like he had for the move to and et cetera, that I can get the old Windows 10 that works for me tool back. But um, 
Also, there was a question in the chat that says it's uh, Windows 11 faster. I think it is. I think it's snappier. Uh, that was one of the questions that was asked. Uh, That's basically going to depend on your computer processor, too. Yeah. And if but you have really an is. SSD drive. Yeah. But it really does. Um, it does seem to be really snappier than. Uh, I mean, I th I had it on my old computer. I have it on another computer, which is basically very similar. And uh, the Windows 11 is is faster. Um, any other questions? I got a question here for a poll, right quick. Need people to take the poll. Is this what is this the question is incomplete. Is this what operating system do we currently use? Yes. Okay. You had to read the invisible ink. I know. Mm -hmm. And here again, I don't know how to spell leather either. Oh. This background me you... is Bill James' backyard last year. Ah. <laughs> He had a picture of it, and I said, you must send that to me so I can use it as background. So as I'm yes. seeing, most people here are using 10. A few people out of 17, two people are using 17, and I'm not quite sure what the other is at this point in time. Is that Linux? Yeah. Absolutely. OK. Well, I should have I realized that was Lester. OK. Oh. <laughs> Good job, Lester. Here's our results for that one there. And we're going to do another poll right quick. I'm not quite sure what this one is. <laughs> and like I said, I do have it, but it's on the laptop on the dining room table. But I 10 is my production computer. But like I said, we have a few here going to say yes. Uh, a lot of people undecided. As we said earlier, I mean, you have until, like I said, until October 2025. And that's only saying that Windows 10 will not be supported. They've already stopped supporting, you know, Windows uh, 8 and a few others. But depending on what you use computers for, uh, you can still run it. Uh, my computer downstairs, my basement, what is my media server, I think is running Windows 8 on it. And it's just a media server. All my movies and my videos are in, and music are on that. And I can access it. I don't need anything other than that. It works fine for me. But like I said, I'm still running that particular version. Now, so, one of the yeah. problems I find um, by not upgrading, and like I said earlier, I've had every version of Windows uh, since uh, 3.1 is that uh, learning your learning skills are kind of uh, it, uh, they evolve. So um, if you uh, sort of miss a couple versions, then when you're faced with finally you have to do the new one, you, then you're kind of in limbo because you're totally lost. So that's kind of the reason why I have always uh, just went ahead and upgraded to the latest one and tried to uh, learn because you build on your skills. And if you uh, don't do that, then you're gonna be uh, lost in the weeds at some point. So if you can, if you're able to, I would uh, suggest, you know, go ahead and upgrade. If it's not gonna cause any problems with your um, hardware, it's gonna uh, cause any uh, financial difficulty, then I would just go ahead and upgrade, learn the new system, because uh, before you know it, you will be with Windows 12, and uh, you're still stuck on Windows 7, and uh, those are two different uh, ball games. I mean, so that's just just my opinion. And our older brains need to keep learning; it keeps us sharp. Okay, here's one to add to what Bill just mentioned. Are you ready? Or do you know? Uh, 
I try to check on, uh, see if mine will, any of my computers will upgrade to 11 and they're just, most of them are too old. Yeah, I have um, the same problem. I have two computers sitting here right now, one next to me. Um, the one I got, my main computer is about three years old. The other computer is about five years old and it says it's not uh, capable of upgrading, although my main computer here is. And that's about the only one I have in my house that's, that's ready to upgrade. Uh, I don't really want to do it at this point in time. I've heard things about before you back, before you upgrade, make sure you back it up. Watch, this is any case, always back up things before you install new things in your computer. But uh, yeah, I uh, I might sometime this year or next year, or if I ever get a new computer, then I'll be ready for 11. So JJ, you're, you said that your three-year-old computer doesn't work with it? My three-year-old computer is. My other computer, which is uh, it, it, all three, all my computer base are HP. I have an HP uh, Sprout, which is the one with the 3D scanner in it. It's about five years old, and it says it's not capable of upgrading. Yeah. Yep. But this one here, like I said, I've had it about three years, and it's, it's ready. I have another one downstairs. I haven't tried it yet. And... Uh, I have about three computers downstairs in the basement, but whatever. I'm like Bill. I'm too many toys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, I, uh, Bill is considered the uh, the gadget guy for his club, and I've been called that for our club. <laughs> uh, Bill and I were talking. I called and talked to Bill the other night on the phone, and uh, we're into these home automation type things and cameras and stuff to, to uh, make our whole house smarter than us. Uh, Bill has something new that he, uh, I found out about about a couple of weeks ago, something called the Wise Car. Bill says he's got one as a doorstop right now. I'm not quite sure what he's doing with it. And mine's supposed to be delivered on Wednesday. And we'll have to collaborate. <laughs> yes. But uh, like like new toys, like playing with new things. Anybody got any other questions? Uh, I just have something. Uh, I came in at, I thought the meeting started at 11 o'clock. Yeah, we, we, I'm sorry, Judy. We started a little early because uh, the the business meeting was shorter than I planned. Okay. Or else yeah. we had about 15 minutes of dead space. Okay. But and it, uh, did he talk, did Bill, did you talk about parking the, do you want to go up to 11 over to the right so you don't ac accidentally click on it? I did. Okay, thank you. I showed a screenshot. Good. <laughs> you were that was the very last thing I showed. I got here. You were on that HDMI screen forever. Oh. Oh well, yeah. I talked to that. Uh, that was the very start. I had that um, my my uh, preliminary rant. Um. <laughs> then we went into the demo. So you didn't miss very much. Okay. Yeah. And Judy will be doing our presentation next month. And I will be checking on each and every one of you, too. <laughs> OK. I, so I wanted to a new Dell computer with Windows 11 on it, along with a copy of Windows 11 for Dummies, which I'm currently reading. Did it actually come with a computer, or did you go out and buy it? They probably bought it. It's a, that, the deals that books are probably separate. I didn't know there was one out so quickly. Oh, there, there's probably a Q book out too. <laughs> one, one thing I wanted to mention is your computer may say it's not eligible for the uh, up, update. Um, if, it, if it mentions that you're not running the, uh, the UFI BIOS, but your computer is uh, capable of doing it, my new computer is only about a little over a year old, but when I set it up, I didn't set it up under UFI, I set it up under the old uh, bio system. So all I would have to do is change that over and change the hard drive partition type, and I'd be able to do the upgrade. Yeah, I understand uh, Bob G talked about that a couple of months ago, that he had a computer, a Dell computer, I think, and it was something about a change in the BIOS that uh, emulated the TM, or TPM chip, and he was able to change that and upgrade his with, to a Windows 11. You so can do both. Not that Some of them were turned. Not capable. It's just maybe there's a it, it might be turned off. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. 
and I don't know why, but some of the ones that the um, TPM module uh, is, um, is turned off in the BIOS. But in this case, David just, he didn't use a UFI BIOS. He used a, um, uh, uh, the standard BIOS. Right, because that's, that's what I was used to. Yeah. If you Google that question, there are tons of how-to articles on how to flip the switch, so to speak. Right. I'm, I'm just waiting until I decide if I really want to do it or not. I do I do have a laptop that has uh, that's all ready to go, but it only has four gig of uh, RAM. So I'm a little leery about uh, how fast or how well it will work with only four gig of RAM. Is it working with 10? It's working fine. It was it came out with 10. Yeah, I don't Actually, think it came it out with 10 out. Yeah, I don't know if that would be an issue. I would go ahead and try it. If it didn't work, then revert back to 10. You have 10 days to do it. What, right. is, the, what is the 11 recommending for RAM? I think it's like four. OK. The, the minimum is four, correct? Bill, you, in your settings, you were showing something about using HDR setting. What 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 is that, you know? Oh, the HDR? Yeah. It works just like the um, HDR um, for any video or TV that, you know, it makes high the black resolution. blacker yeah. high resolution. Uh, it, that's dependent on the um, the screen that you're using. Monitor, right? I don't know if I have mine turned on or not. Um, you, have, you had the sitting turned on in your settings. I was wondering, is there, is there a major difference between that and regular? Because I have, right now, I'm, I'm sitting with two monitors in front of me. And the one's a, a large uh, 32 and the other's a 27. And I was wondering if that would change anything. The main thing I use, I, I, I'm like some a photographer and video editor, so that's one of the reasons I use these big screens. Well, I, it's dependent on the display itself as it's capable of running HDR, then okay. uh, you'll probably see. There, there's a little video just like in the old one, which shows you what it off and what it on. Right. And I think in my opinion, it's just rather minor, subtle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, in my camera clubs, everybody's talking about doing HDR sometimes for photo for photo competition, and I've, I've you know seen the difference in that between photos. Yeah, but I'm gonna look and see here. Well, JJ, since uh, Judy's computer is running Windows 11, you could try it on hers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she didn't bring it this weekend, but yeah, I could try it. Oh. Like I said, I, like I said, she brought it and I set it up for her and I played around with it for a day or so. Uh, um, not, not I can share my screen and show you uh, the HDR deal. Um, let's see, let's close this out. So um, it's right here, use HDR. And I have it turned on, but then when you click on this, it's going to give you this little, remember this little video, it's almost right. in every version of Windows. And so it shows you. Um, and what it's supposed to do is that, you know, the, the spore definition and the blacks and stuff like that. Right. Um, let's see what it looks like when it off. So I turned it off. See, I really don't notice that much difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can see it a little bit. Yeah, the the the, the blacks are more pronounced. More, yeah, which is HDR. They're like grayish right now. Okay. But it's just a matter of flipping that switch, right. and then the screen goes black. So don't worry about that. It'll come in. and then they give you a little. Um, Remember the hyperlinks here. Um, you can always click on those. You can always get more information. And see, there's a there's right. a there's right. a comparison right there. It's more crisp. Yes. Yeah, but there's also a little window here that says. I think it's about right there. Whatever. But. Um, 
that's one thing I'm reason why I really like uh, Windows 11 is that you have a lot more um, um, options to work with. So it's. Um, have you run across any programs that do not work with the Windows 11 at this point in time? Not, no, uh, not so far. Yeah. I haven't heard of any either. Um, I think if you have really old software, uh, you might have problems. <laughs> uh, but that would be, I think, uh, what I was telling folk, if you are running, if it's running on 10, it's going to run on 11. OK. I don't think it's that much. The biggest learning curve with 11 is finding where stuff is. Uh, because they, the control panel, I'm not control panel, I'm sorry, settings is so different. That's one place. And then, of course, uh, if you're a user of, uh, of File Explorer, then you'll find that uh, different. Yeah, my, my biggest concern about jumping up is my programs. This computer I'm on right now is my video and photo editing computer, and I just don't want anything to stop working. <laughs> well, like I said, I think I don't think they made that many uh, changes to uh, the some of the guts of the of Windows 11 uh, to make it uh, incompatible with things that were running on 10. Absolutely. Another question. Uh, oh, Judy posted something, an article on the hardware requirements. All right. Any other questions? Suggestions? Yeah. What's for dinner? Can everyone tonight? understand uh, how the um, uh, <laughs> The other thing I guess that I, I mentioned earlier was uh, the default browser um, problem. Uh, and I didn't find anyone that has upgraded to Windows 11 that had another browser as the default, that it stayed the default, it did, that Windows 11 didn't change it back to Edge. I really would like to know that. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Chrome user, you know, Google Chrome user. Actually, I don't use that either one of them. I'm we'll a Chrome say, user, um, but I'm using the AVG browser. Uh, yeah. On the, on the computer that you upgraded for uh, Judy, mm -hmm. was it what? What was she using? It as wasn't. A, it wasn't upgraded. It was a new computer. But oh, it had Windows 11 on it. But I just had to when you upgrade, turn it on, it goes in, brings up Windows 11, and it looks for upgrade updates right away. Now, Diane was says, yeah, can we use Parf? Yes, you can use it. I mean, you can use any of those browsers. It's just that it won't be the default. Okay. You know, when you um, when you click on a, a um, link uh, in a um, article, the browser that is going to present that information is going to be whatever you have as default. So it'll be either be Edge, if it's the default, or Chrome. But the issue now is if you um, want to set a default browser up, you have to uh, set the extension. I mean, it's not the matter of going like what I did earlier that you can just go in and select that as the default browser and it automatically flips over. I know, I know the group up north, the Watt group, uh, a lot of people up there use the Firefox, but I don't know anybody up there that's using Windows 11, so I haven't heard any problems with uh, Firefox and 11. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, I'm not saying there's a problem. Yeah. I'm just saying that a lot of folk like to, when they click on a, on a, a link to a website, they want it to go to whatever their default browser is. They want it to go to Firefox or Chrome and not edge well if you don't have that uh if you don't have that set as a default then uh it's going to go to edge is the default browser for windows 11 that's all i want to say okay 
So if you upgrade it from 10 and had Chrome, did the upgrade revert your default browser back to Edge? That's the question. Yep. Yep. But if you have a Chrome button on your taskbar, you just click on that and you'll go to Chrome. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's not, a lot of people don't want to well, do it. Well, it's the same. If you, you click on, on the yours. E to get to Edge, you click on the G, the C to get to Oh, wait, Chrome. Eric, hold on a second. You he, have just, he just posted something. Says I like Chrome and had to reestablish Chrome as my default browser, but Windows 11. How did you do that, Eric? Talk to us, Eric. Don't forget to unmute. Eric's not talking to us. No, he doesn't yeah. have the option. His computer. He doesn't have a camera. He has right. a microphone. Well, he says he can't do it. So okay. Oh, okay. Well, um, well, I've I've reestablished some yeah. defaults on some of the computers I've reestablished for the Waukegan Public Library. Not necessarily the browser, but for example, yeah, Eric's got it right. You go to settings, and let me see if I can talk to you while. Well, that's I'm yeah. Well, I showed that. I mean, yeah, you have to go to settings, but my question was settings he answered it. He says apps. that yeah. You have and to go click on the app that you want. Um, but it, it's not that hard to do. It's just well, it's not quite the same. Uh, hold on a second. I don't this is how this is how I discovered you do it. Uh let, let me share my screen again. Let's, and then don't forget, with your browsers, just like your operating system, you need to go in to every single setting and customize them the way you want your browser to work. Okay, so this is, I'm going to bring up Chrome. And uh, Chrome is not my default browser, Edge is. So I'm going to go here to settings. And then I'm going to click on make a default browser. All right. Before, mm -hmm. when you clicked on make default, that's all you had to do. It would automatically go, automatically change. Now it takes you to the default apps, as you see here. So in order to make that work, and here you have to type in the file type, which is dot HTML. And notice it comes up with Microsoft Edge. So you have to click here and then you're giving the choice. Okay, yeah. Keep using is. this app or use this. And that's how it's changed. That's new. Okay. That's not how it's been done in the past. That's good old Microsoft making you go through more hoops. I'm sure somebody in the European Union will sue them because of that. <laughs> so if you have if you have Firefox installed on your computer, you will have that option show up. It's the same thing. Firefox will show up here. Okay. Actually, I was reading somewhere within the last week or so that Microsoft is making it harder than this to uh, switch to Firefox, and people have done it, and it switches it back over to Edge. Yep. yep. So they're being oh. really nasty with Firefox. Which just makes people hate Microsoft more. Now, this right here is the... Um, uh, in the insider group, they're going to change that now where it will go, it will, if you click on the application and said make it the default, it will then go ahead and change it. But currently, the way it works is that, uh, and this would be for Firefox too, if you had Firefox installed, it would, Firefox would then show as one of the other options. And then you just click on it and it would become, it would become the default. But Microsoft is changing that back to Edge. No, they're not. They're I not. Think all those people who wrote about it are wrong. I think so because that's not that's not the way it, that, what, the way it works is the way I showed you. Uh, JJ, did you say you use you use AVG's browser? Yes. And and why is that? And could you show that to us? Because I, I have the whole AG, AVG package. Got it, as opposed to the Avast package. Which right, but Avast, as you told me a few months ago, Avast owns ABG. 
Yeah. So I got the whole AVG the security whole package and I use the browser. Says they're the same thing. Yeah. Does it look different than anything else? Nope, it looks the same as, as, as Chrome or Google, Chrome or whatever. It, well, it's built off Chrome because it's right. Uh, yeah. browser. Right. Does it have the safe, safe banking and stuff like that, like VAS does? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I don't use the banking through my browser. I have just go directly into my my account, my credit union. No, no, it's just it it hides everything for you. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, just just asking. Okay. Uh, Bill, it looks like there, there's a <laughs> an alternate way to uh, to change default. Uh, it you know it you showed the one for uh, specifying a file type. It looks yes. like you can also specify the application down below that. I noticed uh, there was up at the yes. top there was, and that's and then, a true that's a true statement. But I don't. I think uh, you're probably getting. Um, if that application is not on your computer, um, well, well, I'm, just, I'm down. To... I'm downloading <laughs> Firefox right now. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yeah. If if it's if it's not on your computer, you wouldn't want to make it the default anyway. That's true. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. <laughs> uh, okay. Quick, this... quick quick question. No you know, can you run Windows 11 on a Mac? <laughs> well, yeah. If you use uh, the Chrome extension. Yeah. I've done that. Okay. I have. Uh, let's see. I have Firefox. I maybe have to restart my computer. Not now. <laughs> no, I won't do it now. Oh, here's the link. Windows 11 officially shuts down Firefox default browser. AJ, apparently you can with parallels. Yes. Okay. And AVG does have the safe route, the safe banking mode, which puts you in a virtual desktop. Okay. And I just posted a link from uh, mid December about Windows 11 shutting down Firefox's default browser workaround. Yeah, I saw that. I just read it. Everybody remember uh, here again, if you have any questions about these links, go ahead and save your chat so you can view these links later. Well, I just downloaded it and I didn't seem to have that. I didn't have that issue. So maybe they've changed their minds. I can't get it to run right now because I'm going to have to restart the computer. Okie dokie. Anybody have any other questions for Bill? Uh, I have a, a comment. All uh, right. You know, a lot of us have uh, older hardware, and and uh, we'd like to stay safe with a. You know, we don't want to have obsolete an obsolete op operating system uh, because uh, you know different uh, our our system might be hacked into and stuff like that. So um, on older computers, if um, if you're especially like uh, young at heart or and hopefully of mine, you may want to consider going to Linux uh, because uh, <laughs> I see Judy waving there. <laughs> uh, it's uh, as time goes on, uh, computer operating systems tend to look more alike and, and operate more alike. And the same is true with Linux and Windows. Over time, they've gotten closer and closer together. And so if you have older hardware and you, like me, hate to throw things out, it might be in the future uh, a good alternative. 
to install Linux and there's lots of different distributions of Linux. I use Mint myself, Linux Mint, and uh, they they will never, at least so far, they've never abandoned old hardware just because it's old. Uh, so I'd like, to, and if anybody in the club needs help installing Linux, I'd be more than happy to help with that. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of my computers are um, dual boot and and they will um, boot into either Linux or Windows. Because, you know, my my computers are a little bit old, but they're not too old for Windows 10. So I have uh, most of my systems are dual boot. So I, that's all I, I got. I found Linux to be somewhat of a learning curve also. I, I was uh, on the a Zoom meeting a few months back with the Columbus group and they helped a young lady install Linux on an older laptop during the meeting. But it's here again, like I said, like everything else, it's a learning curve. You have to learn how to set it up on a few things. Those guys in, in Columbus get into a lot of command line stuff though, which is way beyond something that I used to do back in the DOS days. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, <laughs> all right, one more, one Wait. more, one more. Oh, great. Go ahead, Judy. Wait. Um, if you're interested in Linux, you need to come to the January 19th Wednesday workshop. Our Linux workshops are always the third Wednesday of the month. And it's, it's specifically for me because I, I'm not a Linux user. I don't intend to become a Linux user, but I'm viewing it from the standpoint of somebody who would like to. And they have things called Dolphin, and then somebody else can make another distro and call the Dolphin uh, Nemo, and because they can name everything. And we don't compute what they're talking about with what we have been using since the DOS days. So John Kennedy is going to download a plain version, and then he's going to set it up and tell us exactly what everything is. Because I tell them when they talk about the blah, 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 I don't have anything in here that equates it to Windows that I can say, ah, aha, I get it. So the 19th is for me. And it's going to be very basic for anybody who wants to find out what you do and how you make your choices, how you stop and smell the roses and decide what you want to do. And there are Linux distributions that look exactly like Windows. There's one that looks exactly like Windows 11. Yeah, once you, once you set it up here again, it almost looks like and operates pretty much the same. But yeah, the, the, it does the same thing, just like LibreOffice. Right. With my oldest daughter's father-in-law, he thinks he's using Excel. No, no, he's using a Calc, but he wouldn't pay the money to upgrade his uh, that program when I moved him up to 10. And so he calls it Excel. We all call it Excel. And it looks and acts and feels just like Excel. And it makes us all a very ca happy camper with him sometimes. I got one more poll question. Then I have a question to ask everybody, ask to see what people are doing. Um. If you are going to upgrade to it, I recommend you do it the latter end of Q, uh, Q1 2022, because I feel by that time, Microsoft will have made all the changes from the grabs and complaints, and it'll be maybe more usable for us who are ingrained in Windows 10. <laughs> I know Bill totally disagrees with me, but Okay, we'll share this results right quick and then we'll stop. Oh. So we have a few ones. Yeah, one person out of 12 said never. And here again, Ooh. most people say with the purchase of a new computer, which Judy just did. But uh, like I said, uh, for me, like I said, maybe this year, maybe whatever, I'm gonna play around with it. When I find time, that is, that's my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my last question before we close out, is anybody using a Chromebook? No. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I followed, yes. uh, I followed uh, he Huey Poplock on the Chromebook thing. And here again, Chromebooks, uh, I, 
I know Phil did a, a presentation a couple of years back on Chromebooks when they first came out. I just can't find a use for them, and they sort of uh, are aimed towards seniors. And I know that the schools are using them because they are basically a, a, a what a Chrome-based type computer. But uh, I just want to know if anybody had one. Yeah, JJ. Yes. I I do have a Chromebook that I use every day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a. Uh, uh, like you, I'm a, a two-story person. My work computer is Windows 10 downstairs. And uh, upstairs, I have the Chromebook. Uh, and I can check uh, email, uh, go and uh, first thing in the morning, not first thing, but early in the morning, check the upcoming weather. And, uh, you know, just a general internet resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my, main, my main computer per se is actually my iPad Pro. Like I said, I got a tri level and I have something on each level. Uh, my iPad Pro mostly stays in the main level in the living room. I'm upstairs in my office right now. And downstairs, I have one computer which has the website on it, another computer which has my media server on it. So uh, I don't have a computer in the bedroom yet, but anyhow. <laughs> You Bill's, Bill's uh, Chromebooks for Geeks presentation is excellent if you want to find out how you can use your Chromebook. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's the, be it's the best one that APCUG has. Thank you. Uh, where, where I, is haven't got any questions. I haven't got any questions about Chromebooks. That's one of the reasons I haven't requested that presentation. Well, it will be a Wednesday workshop soon okay. because okay. I have had a question, you know, and he's going to, he gave it at a VTC I think sometime in 2021, but we all update our presentations every time we give them. So he's added new stuff. And I use the Chromebook to do, to do the, uh, I don't, I don't use Windows. I use the Chromebook to do the uh, demo. To, to prove that it actually does work. Yeah. yeah. But again, that was a learning experience because like Linux, Zoom, it, its platform was Windows and then Max, and then Linux. And John Kennedy's job for APCUG was to keep hounding them to get it better useful for Linux users. And Chromebook has been, again, a learning experience with them and getting it so the Chromebook users are happy with it and they're happy campers now. It keeps evolving every, I think, um, the latest version uh, um, it's really pretty good. You can even use, um, they have a version of Zoom that looks like the Windows version. Yeah. Yeah, I, I Zoom on my Chromebook. Cool. All righty. Anybody else? Nope. Well, JJ, thank you so much. For <laughs> thank you very much, Bill. I, what's, what's, the temp, what's the temperature out there in Oakley right now? Uh, we have, um, it looks like it's 50, but let me, um, let me, hey, Google. It's 60 in Southern California. I don't even want to talk to you guys here again. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't got above freezing yet here. It was 26 degrees here. Oh, yeah. yuck. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, it's 50, um, 50 degrees. It was warmer. It's kind of come down some. Okay. Well, a couple of weeks ago, he'd say, you know, it's 73 here. And I'd go, <laughs> and it'd be seven, it'd be 43, but it was 43 at seven o'clock. And it was not, you know, at 930 in Oklahoma, it was 73. And then, oh dear, the next day it was 16 for him. How sad. <laughs> well, again, Bill, I want to thank you for the presentation. Judy, thank I want to thank you for joining us. I, all our guests that we had today, thank you for joining us. And, uh, I said next month's meeting, Judy will be what is doing a program. And the other than that, everybody, for you guys in, in warmer states, stay warm. For uh, us who are in the colder states, uh, stay warm. <laughs> and, <laughs> don't go outside. Uh, yeah, don't go outside. I got to go out and get my mail pretty soon. But anyhow, <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. Have a good day. Bye, Bye, Master. Oh, wait, let me say my chat. Save your chats. Bye, Bye
All right. Okie dokie, we're out of here.